Okay. So the next thing we're going to look at is this too much milk example. Uh, we will work through a number of solutions and we'll look at which ones work and which ones don't and try to reason about why they, you know, some of them ones work and some of the ones don't. Okay. So essentially the, the problem of too much milk. Consider two roommates who need to coordinate and to get milk and put it in the refrigerator if it's out of milk. Okay, we'll define the problem more precisely in a second. So here's an example situation, right? So person A, person B, right? Let's say uh, what the person A looks in the fridge, it's out of the milk, you leave for the store, you arrive at the store, and when you arrive at the store, person B also looks in the fridge, it also is out of the milk still. Uh, person A buys the milk, person B leaves for the store, person A puts away the milk, person B also buys the milk and puts it away. Now you've got too much milk. You have two cartons of milk in the refrigerator when really you needed just one. So the goal of too much milk is to ensure that there's at least one glass of milk in the refrigerator, but there is not two glasses of milk in the refrigerator. So there's exactly and at least one glass of milk. That is the, uh, is the goal of um, this problem. So you got to ensure that uh, in this example, throughout this example, we assume only two roommates. So we'll assume that uh, N roommates is just an extension of this. But essentially, we'll assume that there are only two people coordinating with each other to ensure that there's at least one carton of milk in the refrigerator. All right, so that's the problem of too much milk. I'm going to start looking and take a look at the specifics. Okay. So before we get into... Um, the solutions that do not require a lock. Um, we'll look at what a lock is in a second. Uh, but essentially, the simplest uh, way to deal with this is to use a lock. So lock, you can think of as a way to implement mutual exclusion. It prevents someone from doing something. So the way you would solve, uh, uh, so normally you would lock before you enter the critical section. Um, you unlock when you leave, and you wait if a thing is locked. So important is that um, synchronization involves waiting if the lock does exist. So in order to solve the too much milk problem, you would put a lock on the refrigerator. That is, you lock it and take it, take the key if you're going to buy the milk. And this is too cost you know, if the refrigerator is unavailable because let's say that um, if you want you you want to coordinate both milk and orange juice, and you want the uh, roommate to throw the orange juice into the refrigerator at the same time that you go, you have gone to go and get the milk, then using a single lock for the refrigerator would be pretty bad, right? Um, and so this is one of the problems with locks in that they mutually exclude people from doing even other things that may potentially uh, conflict but doesn't. So I'm opening the refrigerator, that conflicts with you because I could be wanting to put milk into the refrigerator. But if I want to put orange juice, then that action does not conflict. And if you use a lock, then you have no way of knowing whether there's a potentially conflicting action or a non-conflicting action because you've already been conservative and you've locked, saying that it doesn't matter whether you want to put orange juice or milk. Either way, I'm going to lock the refrigerator. Okay. Uh, with the solutions we look at initially, will not use a lock. So this, I just want to put this out so that uh, this is the easy way of dealing with it. Uh, but if you didn't have a lock, we look at solutions that say that if you didn't have a lock, then how would you uh, do this? And we look at uh, those examples before I finally say, you know, lock is probably the easiest way to do with this. And this is just to give you a general idea of how synchronization, coordination, and why it's a hard problem. All right. So to solve this problem, one of the first things you got to define is the correctness properties. So let's try to define that. So correctness for too much milk. So never more than one person buys. Someone buys if uh, needed. And the first solu few solutions we're going to look at is going to restrict ourselves to only atomic read and write operations. That is, the only thing you're allowed to do is read and write. So you don't get to use a lock. And the challenge we're trying to solve is concurrent programs are non-deterministic due to many possible interleavings. Essentially, it's okay if any roommate buys. We're not even specifying if the same roommate keeps buying the milk. We just care that someone buys the milk, but not both people. All right, the first solution. 
using a knot. So we're not uh, using a lock, but we're going to use a knot. So the way we're going to do this is you leave a knot before buying. So that should be kind of a lock. You remove the knot after buying, similar to unlock, and don't buy if the knot exists. So you just wait. So the program would look something like this. So if no milk, if no knot, leave the knot, buy milk, remove the knot. Okay. The result for this, unfortunately, is that there's still too much milk, but only occasionally. Um, why would this happen? So this would happen because precisely at the point of if no not over here, uh, let's say one of the roommate uh, gets into this point, and at that point he checks there's no not person A checks there's no not. Um, person B also checks there's no not, and both A and B get into this phase. Both of them leave the not, both of them go to buy the milk, remove the not. That is, if both A and B could be checking this statement at the same time. And both of them check if there's no milk, both of them get in, check the if there's no not. And so this could be run in parallel, right? So both systems could be doing this. And so that's the bad part. And if that happens, then there would be too much milk. Someone would get the milk. So there's never the case that there would be no milk in the refrigerator because if there's no milk, then someone's going to run this, right? Um, so the problem is not that there is no milk. The problem is that there's too much milk occasionally. Okay. What about a solution one and a half, right? Let's look at that. So another try is why don't we leave the note at this point? So we leave the note even before we get into this phase, even before we check there's no milk, right? The difference is this line compared to the previous solution. We leave a knot before we even check if there's no milk, okay? So what about this one? So in this one, essentially what's gonna happen is the following, right? Leave knot by milk will never run. Right? No one ever buys the milk because I've already left the knot and this statement here deadlocks with this statement here. This if will never be, um, it's always equals false. It will never be true. Right? Because I leave the knot and I'm checking if there's no knot, there's no knot. Right? So that's a pretty bad idea in that now what's going to happen is no one ever buys the milk. Previously we had a problem that there was too much milk. Now there's a problem that there is no milk. Let's look at a solution two. What about label knots? So the previous problem was that um, the person left knots that had no labels on them. What if we let uh, loads like knot A? Not only are we saying that it's a knot, but we're also saying who specified the knot. So if Logically, if I leave the node and if I check for a node against myself, then uh, it shouldn't be a problem, right? I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't have to deadlock with myself. So let's take a look at how this whole thing proceeds. So we have thread A and thread B. Uh, so let's look at one of the threads. So I leave a node A, um, so it's my node. Uh, I checked for the other guy's knot, so I'm checking if B has left knot. If B hasn't left knot, then and there's no milk, I buy the milk, you remove the knot, right? So essentially, B on the contrary checks if uh, A has left knot, right? So essentially, if the other guy has left knot, then I don't buy the milk. Um, if I've left the knot, then I do buy the milk. So what's the challenge with this? The challenge with this is that it still does not work um, and the reason it does not work is it's possible for neither thread to buy the milk so here's the sequence right thread A leaves note A so this runs um, okay so thread A leaves note A that step runs thread B leaves note B that step runs each one sees the other person's knot right thinking that they're not need they don't need to get the milk because the other person's getting the milk 
right? And if that happens, then neither of us is getting the milk, and then there's no milk. So, even if you have named nodes as opposed to just a node, it still does not work. All right, this is getting to be harder than we thought it would be, right? Um, here's a possible two node solution. I'm still going to use two nodes, but I'm going to fiddle around with the odd rings a bit. Okay, so essentially, note that this is pretty important. So, again, the first step is leave not, leave not. Okay, the next step I'm going to do is while not be, notice that this is a while loop, then do nothing. So, I'm going to keep spinning until I absolutely know that B is outside this section, right? B is not here. So, um, note B e not equals not here. So, if you don't have note B, then you absolutely know B is not anywhere in that box I've just shown you which means it's nowhere close to buying the milk, which means I can check if there's no milk and buy the milk, right? Notice that with B, it's an if statement. It's not a while, it's an if. This solution is asymmetric. One person does the while, or the other person does the if. And there's a reason why. Uh, the while person essentially needs to prove that B isn't here, and with if, Essentially, you got to make sure that um, if you're not in the this section, then just a simple if is sufficient. A little later, we'll ask the question of if that was a while, would this work then? Right? If that was a while, it gets interesting because then this whole thing deadlocks because um, essentially A would be stuck at this point and B would be stuck uh, at this point. So A is stuck at the while part. If this was a while, B will also be stuck here. But if this is an if, then essentially A is spinning at this point, and this one check if there's no not. If there's not, it's just going to wait, um, and then things will just, okay? So if does this work? Yes. It is safe to buy, or the other person will buy, and it's okay to quit. At X, essentially, if no not B, it's safe for A to buy. At Y, if known at A, then it's safe for B to buy. Okay, but notice that these solutions are asymmetric. Right? One's a while, the other one's an if, and that's the reason this whole thing works. If the other one was a while. If this was a while, then essentially the two threads will deadlock, and the solution does not work. So, one, the solution is asymmetric, and like I said, if thread B also has a while loop, then the following happens, okay? Each thread can leave a knot, then go into the infinite while loop. So, this one does this, this one does this, and then both threads are stuck here. So, in B's case, if it's just an if state, but it does not, um, it, it removes its knot and hence unlocking it, right? And so. All right, solution three really works finally, but it's really unsatisfactory. Um, it's really complex, even for the simple example. You only had two guys coordinating with each other, um, and you already had trouble with that. Right? You only had two people coordinating, and you already needed this asymmetric one where you had one guy with the while, uh, the other guy with the if. What if there were three people? Right? How is that going to work? How many variables do you need? Uh, it's hard to convince yourself that this really works. There's actually theoretical proof uh, that this works, uh, but how do you uh, prove that it works? Um, the question is, uh, if you were just an end user and you had to sit down and actually write a paper to convince yourself that this solution works, then it's not really fair, right? I mean, this one, maybe it worked, but then what about other programs? It gets quite hard to coordinate them. And if you have a lot of different thread, then each the code would have to be slightly different for each thread, uh, which kind of makes it hard to get it right. Um, and there's a better way. Um, 
make hardware provide higher, better lateral primitives because um, you could have things like locks being provided by hardware and if you had locks then you wouldn't need to go through all this, the sequence of operations that you just did. Uh, it's a better solution to make this whole thing work. And then you build high level abstractions based on this new hardware support. So too much milk, solution four. So essentially we need to predict a single critical section piece of code for each thread. Um, that's what it boils down to. Right? Um, and so we can take a look at um, essentially what that means uh, in a second. Okay. So if no milk by milk is the critical section. Right? So that's essentially what we want to do. So suppose we have an implementation of a lock, uh, some sort of implementation of a lock. We look at all the different kinds uh, in a second and all the different performance characteristics. But let's say we did have a lock. Essentially, you would need two operations, a lock acquire and a release. Lock acquire just says wait until the lock is free, then grab. Lock release says unlock, waking up anyone else waiting. Um, these must be atomic operations. Because only one thread can do this at any given time. So two threads cannot do a lock acquire and succeed. If you do that, then the solution essentially boils down to lock acquire uh, and then do your critical section and then a lock release. Um, pretty simple, pretty standard boilerplate. And this is how most uh, programs are synchronized. So you have your lock acquire, you have your lock release, and everything else in between uh, is a critical section. Okay.